Hey everyone, today's video is how to post process your star trail images. There are many different ways to do this, but I'm going to focus on my current method. If you are unaware how to take star trail photos, I'll make another video explaining the camera side of things out in the field. But for now, I'm strictly focusing on the editing portion for those that want to improve their star trail image quality. I like using a program called StarStacks, which is free and available for both Mac and PC. So let's get started with that. If you're shooting in RAW format, you have to export the RAW files as JPEGs or TIFF files to use them with the StarStack software. And take note of how you're numbering these. Um, certain numbering systems won't work well with StarStacks. As you can see here with this numbering system, it's doing all the ones first, and then I'll do all the twos. And uh, it's out of order, so it's gonna kind of give us a messed up image. I like to go with 001, 002, and so on. This usually works out the best and you'll have no issues. Once you get that sorted out, I like to choose uh, gap filling as a blending mode and then I'll either play around with uh, comet mode or nothing at all. This is what it looks like with the comet mode long trails. Um, I like this effect that basically thins out the tail of the stars, kind of give them that comet look to them. And then I'll show you what it looks like without that selected. So these are your normal star trails that everybody's you know familiar with. Also, pretty cool. Just it's everybody's personal preference of what they want to do. So once you kind of figure out what you like the best, um, you're gonna start the process. This could take a pretty long time depending on the size of the images and how many you're doing. Now you can see each image is getting stacked on top of each other, creating the star trail effect but it also affects the foreground. My shadows are getting brighter. Um, it's gonna pick up any stray light from my headlamp or, or any light in the area, which this could kind of ruin your foreground, basically. I'm gonna speed this up. You can see my headlamp just got in the way. All right, they're all done. Now this is where the gap filling really helps you out. When you take a photo, there's usually a second or two in between each photo, which causes a gap for the star trails. Uh, this threshold overlay kind of shows you what you're, what you're filling. And this will kind of, as best as possible, fix those gaps for the star trails, kind of make it a little smoother. Just don't go overboard with it. You see the gaps there. The green is showing what's going to be affected. All right, I'm just gonna use this for now and then just save out your photo. All right, there we have it. Some people would stop right here and be pleased with their photo um, I think the foreground got a little messed up. Like I said, there was stray light from my headlamp and the shadows are a little noisy and definitely need some work. We could exit out of star stacks. And next we're gonna work in Photoshop really quick. This is where you should take your photo to the next level. Uh, always clean up your image as best as possible. So what I'm gonna do is open up a previous image that I rendered, it was the comet trail. And then I'm gonna take one of the photos from the stack. Now the photo that I'm taking from the star stack was uh, the last photo I took, I light painted in the foreground. And this is basically gonna give me a nice even foreground that doesn't have a bunch of stray light and first thing we got to do though is line up these two layers. I'm just going to manually do this. You could do layer blending, but uh, sometimes it's not as accurate. So just give me a few seconds to kind of get this into place. Just lower your opacity and fool around with it until it's lined up. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. So next thing you want to do is make a copy of those layers. 
you don't want to work from the original and just in case you make a mistake now we want to replace that foreground with this foreground so what we're going to do is create a layer mask and in this layer mask we want to expose the foreground of the image beneath it so I'm going to use a gradient the layer mask is white so black will expose the image below you know you could also use a brush to fine tune it I picked this image because it's very easy and quick to do some of them are a lot more intricate but um, this one's relatively simple once you get it how you like just merge it together and now we got a nice clean foreground with an awesome background. So some people want to take it a step further. They, when you're shooting the Milky Way Star Trail, uh, you could kind of intensify the Milky Way a little bit more if you bring that layer to the top and then play around with hard light, soft light, overlay, or multiply. Those four tend to give me the best results. Um, let's go to multiply really quick. That's a little dark. I think I'm going to go back to overlay. I, overlay looked the best. Dial it down a little bit. The highlights were a little too harsh. As you can see, the foreground is really contrasted out. That, so we want to make another layer. And with that layer mask, we want to paint the foreground back in. That's pretty good right there. Again, I'm just doing this really quick just to kind of give you an idea. So we could flatten the image now once you have your final product. Uh, I'll make another copy. You should always take out any imperfections. Um, there might be some dust spots, some noise. I'm just going to clone this out. You might want to keep it. It's all personal preference. And we also got this boat trail light. So we'll clone this out as well. You know, some people might like it, but I find it distracting so anything that's distracting away from you know what you're trying to convey to the person that's looking at your image you want to get rid of it you know in this case I'm just more concerned about the rocks in the foreground and the sky I don't want anything at the horizon kind of you know taking your attention away from the sky and, and the foreground All right, that was real quick and easy. We could flatten this image. You know, after we check the horizon line, that looks good. And uh, we could save this out. You know, I would bring it back in Lightroom, do a couple more edits, maybe adjust the noise level, um, increase the vibrancy. Again, that's all personal preference. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. And I hope you could take your Star Trail photography to the next level. Please subscribe and check out some time-lapse footage coming up. <laughs>